This project had a very unique story. Um, reading through the paper through Sun Sentinel, the city of Fort Lauderdale had several breaks, um, almost weekly occurring, uh, drenching the, the neighborhoods and the surrounding areas full of wastewater. They called us real quick, came out, they wanted to stay trenchless, they wanted to rehabilitate, to rehabilitate the existing infrastructure, and they wanted to act quickly. Fort Lauderdale, with year-round sunshine, posh hotels, marinas lined with yachts, pristine beaches, and entertainment and business districts, has extensive river and canal systems that connect the Everglades with the Atlantic Ocean. Breaking news that we've been working in Fort Lauderdale. That is where a sewer line has ruptured and it's affecting a lot of people. This is an extremely large sewer break. The water main or the sewage main broke. Uh, breaking news out of Fort Lauderdale. Dispatch is now confirming that it is a sewage line break. As our water and sewer infrastructure ages, the risks of catastrophic failure of these pipelines increase. The financial toll from a Fort Lauderdale sewer line break in the Tarpon River neighborhood has grown to one of the most expensive pipe failures in city history. The city revealed that it has spent almost $12 million trucking sewage from one manhole to another. In response to the repeated breaks of the 30-inch sewer force main, the city commission approved an emergency declaration for its replacement. The 30-inch force main is one of four primary pipelines and conveys a third of all wastewater in the city to a nearby treatment plant. The city quickly developed a design criteria package and after review, awarded a contract to the Murphy Pipelines design build team, which also included engineers Chen Moore and associates. At a city meeting, commissioners ordered the city manager to speed up work to improve the water sewer system. The city has dubbed the infrastructure improvement program, Go Big, Go Fast. Uh, the Fort Lauderdale project is roughly a $15 million project cut up into four separate phases. Uh, roughly total 22,000 linear foot. When they contacted us in August, we were out here within 45 days permitted uh, in construction, rehabilitating the first phase of the line. We actually started all three phases pretty simultaneously, phase one, phase two, and phase three. Moving on, uh, it started back in August, and we're gonna final in May. That's roughly uh, nine months of 22,000 linear foot of uh, pipeline rehabilitation. That's quite a, a big success, and staying trenchless and, and really um, uh, limiting the disturbances we have communities. Um, we fuse in two days and we pull in a day. Uh, it, it gets no better than that. One of the most important advantages of having gone with the combination of swage lining and horizontal directional drill, uh, besides speed, that we are not um, disturbing the areas of construction. I mean, we're minimizing the disruption. I mean, this is downtown Fort Lauderdale. Some of these areas are very busy with a lot of businesses and I mean there's phase one, phase two, phase three and you know pretty soon phase four. Yeah, phase one is in a residential, high-end residential area. I mean those are things that we also need to look at. I mean, you may think okay we're not disrupting businesses but we're disrupting residents and it's a nice area. So these methods of installation really are providing as much as a clean installation with minimal disruptions that you can provide. Uh, phase two is an area basically full of bars, full of businesses. BCPA there is there, which is the Briar Center for the Performing Arts that have events. We are in front of them. Uh, and, and simply open cut would have been, I mean, an option. I guess you can call it an option. It wasn't an option for this team. I mean, I don't think we would have felt comfortable maybe 20 years ago, but today proposing that with all the, uh, you know, MOT, uh, I guess, uh, interrupting the, the regular um, operations of businesses and residents in the city uh, itself, it's just not a viable option. Also, the amount of utilities that you encounter in those corridors, I mean, it's full of other utilities, main FPL transmission lines, gas lines, water mains, gravity line, storm sewer, I mean, you name it. I mean, when you do swage lining, you know you're going within the hose pipe. So you're eliminating just by the fact of going through the hose pipe, you know you're not gonna have conflict. The first fade was in an ultra urban environment. It's approximately 2,600 linear foot of swage lining uh, through various streets. Uh, the second phase is roughly 1,500 linear feet of directional drill down, down uh, around downtown Fort Lauderdale area. 
The third phase on 5th Street, just north of us, is 6,400 linear foot directional drill, cut into two 3,200 linear foot uh, segments, shots. And the fourth phase, which we're on right now, is 8,800 linear foot of swedge lining, which is also known as close fit tight liner. The speed of construction, the cost savings, and minimizing disruptions for everyone involved. Right? It's really, I mean, it comes up to all of those things. Right.